What's a title? What's a deed? What's the difference? So we get excited about finding our home and all these online portals show us these gorgeous pictures of gorgeous homes and you want to fulfill the dream of home ownership. But there's all this nitty gritty and details behind buying a home. You want to make sure that the paperwork is in order and you're buying something that is legit and reliable. So let's understand what the role of a title clerk is in this whole process of buying a home. The settlement is all about finishing up all the paperwork quickly and getting the keys to that dream home, right? You spend all your time with your realtor finding that right home that checks off all the boxes and can't wait to get the keys so you can start living over there, really. So most of the home buyer's efforts are put towards finding that home with their realtor and, you know, the home selection and making an offer and in this market, you know, making sure that the bid wins um, and you get the home. There's a little bit of time spent on mortgages. You shop around a little bit and try and get the best deal. But nobody's really paying attention to the title. What is a title search and what does it mean really? And what is title insurance and how different is it from homeowners insurance? And do you really need it? Right. So let's explore all of that in this video. So the definition of title in real estate, the title is a legal term that refers to the ownership of a property. It includes the rights to own, use and control the property, right? Which is different from the deed. The deed is the actual paperwork, the document that gives you that ownership, right? So yes, some semantics, but that is the, the important component here. So what does the title company really do, right? That notary who is doing the settlement often is working for the title company. And what the title company does is does a title search on the property. So now that you know what a title is, you want to make sure that the seller who's selling you the house actually owns the title to the property because you don't want to be caught up in a fraudulent scheme, right? But that's not the only thing. You want to make sure that there are no liens and encumbrances on the property. Now, what does a lien or an encumbrance mean? So if the seller hasn't paid his IR, IRS his taxes, the IRS can put a lien on the property. If there is a judgment in a divorce settlement, the, you know, the, the lawyers can put a lien on the property. If he hasn't paid some contractors at the time of purchase, even a builder hasn't paid his contractors who paint the house or, you know, the carpenters, those are mechanics liens and they can put a lien on the property. And when they put these liens on the property, they stay with the house, right? So the title company makes sure that they find any such issues that there are that stay with the house and make sure that they are resolved before you become the owner of the home, because clearly you don't want to be saddled with the previous owner's issues, really. So that is the important component. And then the title company issues what we call a title commitment. So they are agreeing to insure you also for the uh, as long as you own the home. So it's not just about searching, it's about insuring you. It's called title insurance, where they cover you for as long as you own the home. This is not an annual fee like a regular homeowner's insurance. This is a one-time fee when you buy your home only, right? Now, this is different from homeowner's insurance because homeowner's insurance is about the physical building. Tomorrow, your house burns down, you need homeowner's insurance to pay for it. But title only relates to that ownership rights to the property, right? And so if anything comes up six months from now or six years from now, you can go back to the title company and say, hey, I have been insured something that you need to take care of. So a third component of what the title company does apart from the search and insurance is recording. They record the title, your ownership with the courthouse. So in here, we go to the Chester County Courthouse and, you know, they, they put in all the paperwork. And when all the formalities are done, you get the original deed to the property. It is, um, you know, sent to you and your lender. And then you have a physical record of ownership. Right. But even if you lost that physical record, the fact that it is recorded in the courthouse means that, you know, as long as you can prove who you are, that remains your home. Right. So now who needs the title insurance? Like why we talked about why you need it because you don't want to be saddled with the previous owner's issues. Um, but anybody who gets a mortgage on when you buy a home, you need a mortgage most of the time. And if you need a mortgage, the lender makes it a requirement. So if you're putting 20% down and you, you know the lender is putting 80% uh, of your purchase price as a loan amount, the lender is going to require you to get a lender's policy for that 80%. Then what is called the owner's policy, which is the 20% or 10% or whatever your down payment is at that point, uh, that is considered the owner's policy and that may be optional. You don't have to do it. 
it is nice that you do it it, it, it is recommended that you do it but the lender is going to require you to do it so oftentimes and here's a pro tip guys when you're getting a title insurance and your um down payment in the home may be 20 percent right now but as you continue to live in the home right that split changes at some point you're 70 30 at some point you're 50 50 with the lender if you're staying in the home 20 years plus or whatever you may be owning it outright right so this policy that you have bought for only 20 percent actually covers you even when your ownership is 100 percent so right now you're paying a very small piece of the whole puzzle. It's just a few hundred dollars extra and it seems totally worthwhile to actually get an owner's policy because at some point you completely own the house. It is all owner's policy because the lender is gone, right? So let me give you a couple of examples of some title conversations I've had with my clients. I had a cash buyer who was buying an investment property. So clearly there was no lender involved. And he said, Bela, I don't need title insurance. I don't have a lender. I, it is a perfectly uh, optional uh, thing, which I have to respect. I have to let him know that I recommend it. But if he didn't want it, it's OK. Right. Like, I mean, he it's his choice. Uh, now, he was buying a small town home in a cookie cutter neighborhood, which was very young. It was, you know, it's only about five, seven year young property and in a relatively urban area, which didn't have too many previous owners. So he felt like his risk and um, um, his liability would be very limited. I mean, as opposed to somebody who was buying, you know, a 150 year old home that has passed a lot of hands out in the rural areas with, you know, large acreages where we don't really quite understand where the property boundaries are. You know, that's something that you definitely want to get surveys done and, you know, check on the title because the property is exchanged hands so many times. So while I always recommend that all of my clients get a title, uh, he chose not to. And then I have this other extreme example of I always recommend my title company um, because I believe that the you know savings are not significant if you go with anybody on on the internet or you know some other cheaper outfit. And a client actually did that. You know their lender recommended this title company and they said, "Bela, we want to use them," and I was okay with that. I mean, you know, I respect the client and he went ahead and did it. Now, this is a married couple owning the property. And typically what my uh, understanding is that it is by tenants by entirety. That is the, the formal legal term, how a married couple should technically own the property, because um, if God forbid something happens to either spouse, you know, if one spouse passes away, the surviving spouse becomes the automatic owner of the property. You don't have to do any further paperwork. You don't even need any wills or power of attorneys. You don't really have to pay estate taxes or inheritance taxes or anything. You're both joint owners, the owner tenants by entirety. And, um, you know, if unfortunately one person is gone, the other person becomes 100% owner of the property, right? And this married couple did that uh, through another title company and unfortunately this is you know three and a half years after they had bought the home he died he passed away and the surviving spouse was a little worried about the whole paperwork and the process and she was like Bela is this going to be an issue now that he's gone do I need a will do I need she didn't have a will so do I what am I going to do so we had to go back and check the paperwork like what does the deed say and we were shocked to see that the deed did not state that they were a married couple um, they had two different last names. So it looks like they would have to produce a marriage certificate to show that they were a married couple. But in a deed, it could have been easily described as tenants by her entirety, married couple buying this property, even though she was not on the mortgage, she was a stay at home mom at that time. Uh, it would have helped if the deed had specified that relationship, but it didn't. And I spoke with my title person. I said, Patty, what happened? Uh, how come we didn't do it? And she's like, I didn't do this one. So that's when I remembered that it was an outside title company that had done this. And I'm not sure how they all define and, you know, um, put this is a completely different field. This is my 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 partners in the business and I trust them to know their job and how they are doing it, because as a realtor, my knowledge about titles is limited. So, folks, the, the moral of the story is understand title insurance. It is very important. And everything worked out fine for that client, who, but she was worried and she had spent a few sleepless nights in the process. But these are very important pieces of home ownership. 
and you need to understand them all um, as you go through the process of home ownership and you know understand the paperwork understand the partners and the team that is doing and pulling it all together you need an insurance person you need a title person you need a mortgage person you need a home inspector you may need an appraiser you may need you know a lawyer so this is a team that your realtor brings to the table to help you with all of this right and it's a team that you can trust the government encourages you to shop around for these services right for you can't be required to work with particular mortgages they don't want us colluding and making sure that you're working with our mortgage people our title people but i often recommend our title company because even if you're shopping around the savings are not that significant given that you own the home for a very long time and it's such a large a big ticket investment the savings in title fees are not necessarily significant so you might as well go with a, a title company that is known, is trusted and reliable, right? So we have Keystone Title in our office who does all of my settlements and uh, we completely rely on this little team of professionals who, you know, help me do what I do best. Hope this was helpful. Check out my playlist with all other aspects of a home purchase, especially if you're a first time home buyer. This is going to be very helpful for you to understand about homeowners association documents or, you know, understanding inspections, understanding seller's disclosure and more. Check out my playlist.